Hello? Hi, Dad. Hello. Hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Dungeon Discourse. We're here. Four weeks in a row, dude. We're kind of we're kind of on one. Sorry for the bad lighting, been. guys. It's not my fault. My fucking lamp died. <laughs> Pretty much. That's all. That, are we going to have to start a new, like, petition to get Dutch a new lamp? No, I just got to get a new fucking light bulb and screw it in. Um, but, Retro, Natty, what's up gamers, early gang, rise up. Uh, we're here, Dungeon Discourse, we have Ethan and Laura today to talk about, uh, mainly talk about the last session, but also, I, I thought it would be a cool idea to kind of have the two, the two monks on. Talk about monk shit. Talk about monk <laughs> shit. And monk shit. The fact that they're both monks, but, like, each, like, flavoring and playing it so differently. It's a nice, it's a nice little contrast. Um, so, before we, uh, start, have you guys decided on archetypes yet? Yeah, yes. um, Monk, yeah. yes, Bob, I'm not sold on yet. Okay. Did you want to share, or, or no? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, because originally I was just going to go player's handbook, OG, way of the open hand, um, because I, I still never got very far with my last monk, but my last monk mm -hmm. was uh, four elements. So all I know is I didn't want to do that subclass because I've done it. Um, and I like having the physical book to look at, not rely on like D&D Beyond to see what my, so I can take extra time off stream to like really read and understand all the new stuff as I get it. Um, but then James and I bought a physical copy of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything Ooh. And one of the monk subclasses in there, I was reading some of their abilities and I was like, oh, this could be a really good visual storytelling way at one point to help show the arc I want and hope Daigon goes on without saying it. Especially because I can't, I don't talk as much, so I need ways to show, not tell. Mm -hmm. um, and one of her big things is, of course, struggling with like her, her body image and body confidence and feeling like she looks because of the hairlessness and everything. And mm -hmm. there's a one of Natasha's classes is like a spectral astral monk or something. And they like astral project like body parts, like extra arms. They can project a new like appearance on top of them. So I think it'd be really cool. The beginning of her using those powers, they are furred. And you see what hair she would have had if she'd had hair like normal tabaxi. But eventually, whenever she hits the point where she becomes comfortable with her literal skin and doesn't feel like I need to fit in to have friends and be accepted and have worth, then the astral form will start to match her actual body. And that moment will be a really cool moment when it happens. Okay. So I think I'm going to do that one. Nice, nice, nice. Ethan? I, I mean, based on who he is as a person, it should be very clear which monk subtype I'm going for Brooks, which is uh, Way the Drunken Master. Hell yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Hell yeah. Um, it's like... I'm playing a monk that doesn't really subscribe to any monk teachings, doesn't really have like a a monk background or a monk temple, and I'm like, okay, a lot of his ability to fight just comes from tavern brawling, yeah, and that tying in with the fact that he is a deceptive individual, you know, he has con people multiple times like it makes sense to me that if he was in a position where he's getting into those sort of fights he would very much lead into that like overplaying how drunk he is mm -hmm. you know the concept of walking in looking like you're about ready to hit the floor and someone swings at you and then you just snap and immediately duck out the way feels like it's very thematic with his personality as for Barbarian, I'm not intending to take a massive dip into Barbarian. Mm -hmm. um, everything with Brooks isn't set in stone. There are certain things that I want to roleplay out and see how that goes. But in general, I had to do like some rough build ideas just to make sure that things worked and that things add up. And yeah, I'm not completely crippling myself. Mm -hmm. And if you look at like only like the first subclass feature on each of the barbarian subclasses most of them not that useful 
the barbarian that fits most thematically with Brooks would be something like, like Frenzy, which uh, you know, Path of the Berserker Barbarian, mm-hmm. where you get Frenzy, which lets you make another attack as a bonus action, which as a monk. Is absolutely can do. worthless to me. Yeah. And that's all I get out of that. The ability to give myself exhaustion and make another attack as a bonus action is just not worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think if I'm not doing a massive dip into Barbarian, the only one that really seems sensible would be something like Totem Warrior. Okay. And then pick up one of the totems based on uh what sort of role brook sinks into with the party okay. or maybe maybe something like zella barbarian but a lot of them i like i know that i'm shoehorning a lot thematically and things are never going to fit perfectly with this character mm-hmm. but i don't also want something like i draw my powers from gods what gods i have no clue yeah, yeah no i get you so i think, I think it's probably going to be totem i think i just remembered at some points i've only skimmed it um, I also think that subclass, the monk, the spectral astral, I can't remember the exact name, but it's the one that astral involves self. astral projection, that the way of the astral self. I do think at one point, because they're also so clearly about like astral projection and tele- telepathy, telekinesis. I think at one point they developed the ability to communicate telepathically, which would also just be a huge plus as a character who cannot vocally speak. So like for communication with the party. And then I think it'd be like the moment I, whenever, I, if I do that, and when I reveal it, just watching the party freak out and go, what was that? Hearing like this voice I've never heard in their head will be hilarious, but also how often she chooses to use it. Cause it given this can change based on storytelling. I feel like she would still only use it during say like combat or when necessary. And most of the time she would still either rely on Kess or is hoping a part of her, if they travel together long enough, she would love to teach anyone how to use the thieves can't hand talk just no one's ever asked yeah, word of word of so, the spirits you get it at, at sixth level when yeah. you speak you can direct your words to a creature of your choice that you can see within 60 feet of you making it so only that creature can hear you alternatively you can amplify your voice so that all creatures within 600 feet can hear you yeah because then i could use it maybe the point is to amplify because her her voice if she ever uses it will be very quiet and raspy and damaged mm-hmm. or than using it to talk to someone. But the key word is you can use it. It's like amplifying normal speech. It's not quite so... It's also... I have to think, think about it more about using it. But that's also just a very appealing potential yeah. thing that combined with using the astral projection to visually storytell. Astral sights you can see normally in darkness, both magical and non-magical. God damn! Okay. Right, <laughs> you can see through magical darkness. That's cringe. I bro. love that at this point, it feels like half of our party build is just, hey... You wanted to mess with some form of darkness? Fuck you, DM. Fuck you. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's only at level six, so I have to plenty of time. Yeah, yeah I got, uh, we got lots of time. <laughs> we'll be all right. We'll be all right. Three years um, before we hit level four. <laughs> Maybe. Don't tell Duke. He'll cry. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> look, it's always an elaborate ruse. You're never hitting level three, dude. You're just, you're just staying level two for the entirety uh, of the campaign. You know what? I can survive at level two. I think it's Soko that has the roughest time. Yeah. Like I, I was worried that I would have a really like difficult time early levels, because of the character that I'm going for. But, but Jax, man, it's not a good time for him. No, it really isn't. Holy fuck! But that's <laughs> kind of why it's amazing. Goes so goes some of the usually the most strongest, like most combat advantageous, puts the most thought into his characters from a combat perspective. Player borderline yeah. meta gaming, so it's great to see him hindered in this way. And yeah. have to that's a, that's be a good more creative. fucking flip reverse. Yeah, we went over this last time. Uh, yeah. Like a lot of people, almost almost everyone, has done like a full 180 in their characters from like close up to, to the only one that has like a similar play style, I guess. As far as their you know their their campaign one character goes is Ethan. The rest of you all completely flip reverse from what you play towards the end of the campaign. Yeah. Then I've gone for the massive 180 in terms of personality. If if I played. played if I'd played Kisarin the whole time, Kisarin and Daigon have some quite a few yeah, similarities, yeah, yeah. and they're both martial characters, but I, I didn't, so <laughs> you didn't. Um okay. Very good, very good. So last episode, right? Just give you a quick little recap. Oh. Um you ventured down into a Yuanti temple. Uh, that you found, thanks to Jeremiah leaving some some notes and uh, and stuff behind in his home. 
Uh, you traveled there through the jungle, uh, had an encounter with uh, a big monkey, giant ape, um, which you put down after that, after Davian took something that wasn't his, uh, a celestial serpent-like creature appeared in the room, uh, a, uh, a kuwatl that you fought uh, and bested as well. Um, after some weird, like, decision on Soko's part of like, oh, I'm gonna dive into the <laughs> hallway and separate myself. I still don't understand what his brain was thinking, but hey. I'm not. I'm 100 Maybe he was surprised. trying to avoid combat because he's so terrified of maybe, dying. Yeah, maybe two. that's it. Yeah, I just couldn't fight, guys. I was just cut off. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's what that, that's what that was. Um, maybe Jax yeah. is secretly a coward. Who knows? Who knows? Um, after that, uh, venturing down through a network of tunnels, you witnessed the last moments of a ritual. A ritual that turned a humanoid figure, which you assume is Jeremiah, mm -hmm. um, from his, his humanoid form into a more snake-like being. Sharp claws on his hands, a big snake head. Uh, his legs replaced with like a, a large snake tail. And then he... Oh, my phone fell onto the floor. Out of my pockets, so I'm just gonna stay there for now. Um, That's funny. And then um, he got teleported away somehow to uh, a place that, uh, you know, the episode is called All Roads Lead to Sektha, and that seems to be um, the main hub of all the Yuan-Ti tribes that aren't a big fan of these new settlers coming onto their land, defiling their grounds and their temples. Um. Which is where you are headed to next. Mm -hmm. To put an end to this. Uh, your mission is bring back Jeremiah. And uh, as long as you don't have that done, uh, you're going to keep following the leads. And it seems that those leads are taking you to Sekta. I have a question for you. Yes. If, if we had chosen not to long rest, because we had the de decision, we got to the temple at night. We could see light inside. But mm -hmm. we're like, we've we've already fought a monkey, like we're a bit tapped, so we chose to rest. If we had gone in, not rested, would we have been there before the ritual started? And could we have stopped it? Like whatever was being done to Jeremiah? Yeah, absolutely. It, feel free not to answer. <laughs> yeah. no, you, you could you full out you full on could have. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Oh, well, we should have short rested. <laughs> but then but we no, we'd have been screwed because if we hit the if if Davian had brought the Kuwadl while we were already partially tapped, and then we had to fight the Yuan T priests that were prepping for the ritual. Like I still think it was the right choice. I was just curious. About. I mean there were a lot of interesting think... potentials there. Like if the Kuwadl would have managed to put all of you to sleep, you would have woken up and like imprisoned by the Yuan T. Yeah, by Yuan like I think, so, like, there's a lot of I think we're like, at such alternate such universes where level. things could have happened differently. I think we're at such a low level where short resting versus long resting is much more of a difficult decision than it is at higher levels. Yeah. Because you think even with like, like most of us regain stuff on a short rest. Well, you and me would have been fine because monks want to be your multi class. But like, do you get a, your rage back on a short rest? Uh, no, I don't. But I don't need okay. my rage necessarily. Because um, I get all my good, sh like key points, come back on short rest. Yeah, you're That's fine on a short so rest. I would have uh, been okay. Kess is fine on a short rest. But I was and pretty then, sure other people wouldn't be. I mean, Davian can. Yeah, Warlock's got the spell slots back after short rest. Davian could just use his. But the only people really screwed after not taking a long rest. The cleric. Uh, uh Elasrun and Jax. But Jax has a difficult time in combat anyway. They both have like two spell slots. So essentially, we traded seven hours for two spell slots. I don't think it was the wrong decision, but I think obviously at lower levels it's so well, and much more. guaranteed full health because also hit dice. You're not. Gonna, I guess you could roll all of them and you pretty much guarantee. That's true. We do also we have like no hit, hit dice, dice anymore. Yeah, we only have, like we two. used to have like a billion hit dice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah now you have two. <laughs> yeah. So if you roll poorly on both your hit dice, yeah. and you didn't really get much. Back, it's but... like I, I don't know. I like early levels for this specific reason that like there's much more of a. Do we long rest? Do we short rest? But I also hate the idea that like I can literally get one bombed by anything Dutch throws at us <laughs> and be like, "That's I it." Like You're dead. So far, pretty balanced. Like I throw strong creatures at you, 
that it could do a lot of damage, but I make it so that there's only one of them. So like, you know what I mean? Like it can yeah. fucking, yeah. you know what I mean? And Until he puts a lot the monkey creatures. almost the monkey almost ended me, man. The one bop yeah, yeah, yeah. took me I mean, down. That's what I'm to saying. Like... like that monkey <laughs> is strong and could have definitely yeah. downed one of you, but because there's only one of them, it's an easy target to just focus five, down. Six and his AC was super low because he's fucking massive. Yeah. I also um, feel like and this might just be me, but I feel like there's a bias at lower levels where as a DM you're naturally a little bit nicer in combat. Oh, monkey downed you. Yeah, Brooks is scary. He's gonna hit him next. Whereas at higher levels, it's that. much more tempting to be the oh, you're on the floor. Yeah, you're gonna get stamped on like a yogurt tube. Yeah. You know, like yeah, very true. Um, but uh, after that, you fought the Yuanti priests there. Uh, Elasrin put one to sleep, and you questioned this individual uh, after, who gave you things you pretty much already knew, really. He didn't really give you any new information. Like, he confirmed your assumptions, and that's about it. Um, yeah. He seemed very um, okay with dying because his part in this all, in this entire revolution, has been completed. His mission was very simply put, help turn Jeremiah and get him to Sekta. Mission accomplished. Like, he had nothing else to fucking, like, <laughs> that's it. Um... So after cool. after which Jax decided to uh, let him go, which ended up in him <laughs> almost getting fucking choked. But uh, you know, he took, made, quick, made quick work of it, so it's it's whatever. Um, after which, uh, it's about a week worth of travel to get to Sekta through the jungle, or or avoiding part of the jungle doesn't really matter because like timing wise, you either you either go straight through the jungle, but it takes longer because jungle, or you go, which. You avoid jungle, but you more kilometers that you have to Same walk. Same amount of time, comfier beds. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> access to supplies. Mm. Yeah, which, uh, Brooks sort of supplies, but comfier uh, beds. Which ended up in you guys um, getting some rest in um, Southwold. In uh, the one tavern there, which I forgot the name of. Hold on quickly. Get my notes hey, open. Where's my notebook? Uh, in the... Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? The Solid Crow? The Solid Crow. Yes, there it is. Ran by uh, a Jake female knows. redskin what? tiefling uh, called Jolly. She was um, nice. She's cute. This is how many notes I've already taken in four episodes, So proud of you. All I'm of so these fucking pages. proud of you, actually. Actually, <laughs> so Even proud. I've been doing notes. Um, like, heavy notes. <clears throat> Where uh, we had a we had a little a little everybody deafen moments for uh, which hasn't happened a whole lot so far. When uh, Kess and Daigon had a little chat with the barkeep. Uh, obviously the 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 the, the uh, it got vo it got vocalized that that they were looking for for a lotus insignia. Um, that has to do with what they did in their session zero, and I'm not really gonna disclose any of that information. I do enjoy that Soko has already just decided it's the white lotus, and like we never said a color. You, no, you've never asked about the color. We just said a lotus. Yeah, in exactly. my brain, it was white lotus because of Soko. I know it's not. It's, <laughs> it's all you're getting. It's, it's not white. It's <laughs> crimson. That's yeah. Um, I mean, the white lotus is fucking. Um, uh, Avatar. Avatar. That's definitely, like, I, I definitely based <laughs> the name on that, but uh, yeah. Question on the Reddit, by the way, from Soko. Do they play Pai Cho? No, they don't. That's a you question. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, uh, that that all I can say is uh, clearly it, that uh, gives the gives Kess and Daigon some perks in certain places, get some supplies and, and whatnot. Um. Yeah, and that's really it, so far. Um, with that in mind, next session is going to be pretty travel heavy. Next session we're going to be a Soko down and potentially a Laura down. Um, yeah, it depends but, on the internet quality of the cottage yeah. I go to. So I'll do a speed test when I get there, and we'll find out. But we're still gonna we're still gonna play regardless, even if Laura isn't there. Uh, like two people <laughs> down, especially early on, like that's fine. I mean, it's, it's travel from, session anyway. Thematically, Diagon will be just as vocal as normal. True. Uh, yeah, thematically, true. I'll yeah, say just true. as many words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's gonna be a lot of travel. You're gonna you're gonna go eventually enter the jungle again and. Uh, 
I did some research converting a bunch of like real life diseases you could contract in a jungle to D&D versions typhoid. of it. Yellow fever, let's so, go. Uh, it's going to be fun. <laughs> you, know, you guys are going to have to roll, uh, the, spoiler, you're going to have to roll a lot of constitution checks. <laughs> Play some so we just don't go trail. into the jungle ever again. Literally impossible if you want to complete your quest. Smile. <laughs> um, we can find yeah. work elsewhere, it's fine. Mm, yeah. Um, while we're here, if if the internet's like bad enough that I can't make it because I'll lower the quality, Ethan, would you be down just to roll for me since you're already playing a partial monk, and so it'll be easy when I do have when Daigon has to roll something for you to. Cool. Cool. <clears throat> there you go. Um. So, I'm excited for the next session. I'm gonna throw some some intrigue at you. I want to uh, be on there. your travels and stuff. It's gonna be fun. Um. Does anyone in chat have any questions about the campaign so far, or anything about the last sessions, or you guys, perhaps? Do we reckon this is going to be like a super rushed travel session, or is this going to be a no. take some time and chat things out? This is going to take I some think... time, because I've prepared like encounters and stuff for every day of travel. And like... because you're, like, I'm not going to put words in Dutch's mouth, but my guess, since you're down two people, you wouldn't want to get to Sekthaw, where there's probably going to be some heavy lore and a big confrontation I mean, regardless of, of you, you you guys being there or not, my aid, my guesstimate is that you'll, like, reach Sekhtha at the end of the session. At the That's end, good. yeah. And we'll start yeah. the next one. Cool. That yeah. works for me. Uh, but, like, I've, I've got encounters prepared for every day of travel, and uh, there's another, like, city on the way there as well, New Dharmouth, which we will we'll probably yeah. dip into as well. It's, it's so, like, there's, there's plenty of shift, plenty of shift to do. There is lots for us to do. Yeah, exactly. Um... And if not, then Ethan can always just add an hour by doing a new Daramoth pub crawl and make <laughs> and coming up with more drinks. Will it be like the Jungle Book? Sure, Sassy. Sure. I mean, we'll sing the really, Baroness. You really added the Dutch geek and not that Dutch yeah. geek, and that's kind of cringe. Look, like, <laughs> I'm actually kind of pissed. But hey, it's my know. alt account, the Dutch geek. The d <laughs> How long have we known each other, Sassy? God. Rude. Shaking my head. It's fine. Um, I still have occasionally call a sassy simmers. I think, I think my only question was the one I already <laughs> asked about could we have stopped the ritual? And I guess follow like did you have I'm sure you did, but did you have a a, a plan A slash B slash C if we hadn't rested and had gone in? Yeah, I mean and, you like, could have just stopped, stopped you could have stopped the ritual and, and then uh, brought Jeremiah back, I guess. Would have would have ended up fighting Jeremiah and Yeah. <laughs> that would have caused some intrigue because basically you would learn the same things you would you learn now like knowing that sekta is like a fucking cesspool of a plan to clap back at the settlers which at some point yeah. if left un uh, untreated or whatever uh would cause serious issues for for mm -hmm. uh, the the province um but you would have probably ended up traveling back to Eldilon first and kind of discussing and i mean i guess technically getting your reward before going out there but yeah. You, know? you mean we could have got paid before all of this? Yeah. If no, we would have to bring you, Jeremiah if you back. Rested and brought in fucking Matey Boy. Then yeah. And not died to the Coatl and not been captured by mm. <laughs> and like all the asterisks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but there was a chance we could have got the same money for less work. Um. Yes. <laughs> oh, I really that, hope Brooks doesn't ever realize that. That 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 chance does did. I mean, it's pretty simple, right? If he wouldn't have been teleported away or wouldn't have been transformed, you would have interrupted the ritual. He would have been there. I nabbed him. You could have nabbed yeah, him. Yeah, but and your mission is to bring back Jeremiah, right? So, one on one is. Brooks two. hasn't bothered to actually think about it any more than what's face value. <laughs> so, like, he's not stupid. He's just not smart. Not even that. Like, he's. <laughs> he doesn't over... enjoy. He's average pursuits. intelligence. He just doesn't ever consider that it's worth thinking about why not he just... can use brain he just doesn't like using brain because not fun fair, fair fair he has that very like why focus on something that's already happened when you can focus on the next thing and then the next thing and then the next thing yeah he's a little stupid uh, excuse <laughs> me uh, um stat wise no character wise yes exactly <laughs> character smart but player dumb therefore character sometimes also dumb <laughs> this is where Dutch is like, yeah, just for the fun of it, I'm taking three points of Brooks' intelligence. Rude. <laughs> um, I wouldn't, dude. I, I would never. Um, He's gonna slip something in one of my drinks that just permanently reduces your intelligence. Can you a imagine? Maybe. Oh my god. The perma roofie. 
the Everyone's power. least favorite thing. It doesn't knock you out, it just makes you stupid. Um, unless there's any, uh, like, questions and whatnot. I have a little, a little, a little, a little game prepared for you. Not so much a question, but I was gonna mm -hmm. say one thing I really liked about the session. I loved the discussion that came up with when, when Jax was like, I'm gonna try and let this man go <laughs> and then mm -hmm. almost died because the whole thing, um, like J James and I were talking and now that the plot's been revealed, he, he told me about a chat you and him had about this kind of plotline, a, a, diff yeah. a, a different original way he wanted to introduce it. And mm -hmm. he just gave, cause again, for those that don't know, I live in Canada as is James and Canada is going through a whole um, kind of discovery right now. Cause it's, it's never been a, it's a secret, but it's always been a thing we don't really talk about how we pretend we're this so progressive and such an accepting and lovely country, but we actually have done horrible, horrible things to our indigenous people that lived here before us for years. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going through a big cultural thing right now because residential schools, which is where indigenous children were taken from their families and sent to try and basically force them into like white colonial culture. And they were abused, tortured, and were finding out murdered at these schools. We're now at over 7,000 bodies of children and only like 11 schools out of the 160 across the country that were searched. And these mm -hmm. schools were still open in our lifetime. So it's a very big kind of open wound in, going on in Canada right now. And so the whole issue of oh, the plot being centered around indigenous culture that was here before the now, like, the city, the people that you're yeah, working like, with. Uh, which is why from... um, um, uh, I kind of changed some stuff and I made it so that, yeah. um, you know, some of the ones you live peacefully among and with and, and yeah. that. And uh, I made it yeah. very, I made, it, I made the plot very clear that there is this vocal minority that are under the influence of an evil god that are doing the yeah. clapping back. So like I made it so yeah. I mean, I, that that so that's how it, it, the plot line overall still very similar, but just by changing yeah. those details, I made it less. Uh, yeah, and I just want to say like, I appreciate that. I think you're doing a really good job of it because also that discussion that we then had of Jacks being like, this man has a point. Their land was just kind of like these people strode in and are like, we live here now and we own mm -hmm. this now and stuff and and it, it just it was a very good conversation because the the end of the conversation with the group was. None of us agree. None of us think colonialism is great. We all agree that these people have a very real grievance of a foreign culture coming in and assuming ownership and dominance. But there are people who are voicing concerns in a way that doesn't harm innocence. There are people who are looking for change in meaningful ways, and there are these people who are being seduced by an evil god, like you said, and willing to kill like babies and, and children and innocents, and just willing yeah. to try and destroy everything to change it back. So there are again, there's ways. There's ways to change things, and they're doing it in a very, very bad way. So it makes yeah, me feel a lot better doing, about the whole do, plot do, line, and not like, like we're perpetuating. Baseline, their this. motivation is understandable, but they're doing the wrong things exactly. to to yeah. like yeah. yeah. So I like the conversation discussion? that came from when Jax tried to do that, trying to destroy cities. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like I like the idea as well because uh, now that there's you know there's there's you want these tribes that like coexist and trade and mm. and whatever. Uh, live among the the settlers learning from their culture to improve their own uh you know methods of whatever the fuck it is farming mining whatever it may be right uh that is also going to throw in some intrigue because you know how will the party react after all the yuan tea that they've seen so far have been hostile what if they find a friendly like you know how's that gonna go yeah you know what i mean um because so also Jack's Jack's pointed out too. It's like, hey, I've lived among some of the peaceful yeah. ones, and also again, the whole hey, just because they're it's also brought up like just because they're snake people. It's like because they're animal humanoids or something. Around, I was like, as another animal based humanoid, <laughs> I agree. We probably it would be like it'd be hella hypocritical if Daigon was like they're not human, so they bad. It's like what the fuck? What are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like Brooks quite often refers to them as snake people instead of Yanti, e and it's very like almost derogatory in that way and i don't think for him it's anything serious it's simply a case of dysfunction over <laughs> over thought mm -hmm. and i'm really excited to meet friendly yuanti because i don't know how brooks is going to react to it i think at first he's going to be very adverse to it and well, then he's going to look alert, back to you're gonna so <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
I think at first he's going to be very averse to it, and then he's going to look back on that and be like, no, I've been on the other end of that. That isn't something that I want to be like. I don't want to be seen with that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be really fun to roleplay through. Okay. Um... I have a little, a little, a little test, a little game, but also a little test for you, uh -oh. just to, to to see how well you've paid attention the past few sessions. Can we use our notes? <laughs> I'm gonna say uh, My notes no character, initially, that yeah. <laughs> but if you guys really fucking suck, then yes. Uh, All my notes are in is, character. Uh, is uh, get either like a piece of paper or open like a fucking document. Um, and I'm gonna ask you questions. You're gonna write your answer down, and at the end, uh, you're gonna send me both like answers, like answer sheets, and I'm gonna see who did better. Really? Okay. So let me know when you guys have that pulled open. I'm just ready. using my notebook, so I'm good. And I promise I won't look at the other pages. <laughs> yeah, until you win. So the first question <laughs> is an easy one. Mm. The festival that you've just uh, attended was to celebrate the anniversary of the settling of Eldilon. How many years has Eldilon been a city? I actually know this one. I know this I'm one. I'm so proud. Okay. There you go. <clears throat> I've been keeping my notes in like year and date and shit. So. So I put the date at the beginning of every session's notes so I can actually keep track of the time of how long we're spending and campaign <laughs> doing shit. Because um, we're going to be, we'll be like, Yo, we've known each other for years. It's like you've been together two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's the first question. You have your answer written down? Yep. All right. Question number two. What is the title of the leader of the Imperial Trade Company? The Trade Company? Yeah. Where we... What okay. is the title of, of, that, of their leader? It's not their full <sighs> name, just their title. Their, their like okay. status. I think this is it, but I don't know. I know the name, but not the title. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, it goes without saying, Twitch chat, don't help us. Yeah, true. You can play along. No one's done it yet. You can play, you can play along in chat if you want. But... Or, yeah, maybe I should just close chat, and then Twitch chat can play along. Okay, I mean, they can play that. along as in, like, you know, open a little document for themselves and also write all the answers down. Right? Like, the that, name's that in my notes, Bell, but he said not to look yeah. at our notes. We're trying to do it I without see, the I notes. See, I want to see how much you guys know by heart. Yeah, the title's in our notes. Um, I... I... Don't know if that one's in my notes because I don't know if Brooks would care. It's in mine. Okay. Question number three is um, a question that you both should know because you've both interacted with this NPC just on different uh -oh. uh, on different occasions. Interesting. What color eyes? Does the Asimar have that resides in the Weeping Mug? It's an NPC that you've both you both you both know. Oh, oh! I do know this. One. Oh, I know this. If what do you I'm mean? Brooks has race. never interacted <laughs> with Fuck this off. NPC. <laughs> Fuck off! Yeah, what do you mean? Dig, dig into the. I don't know who this is. I love how like both. <laughs> Because both our characters don't know Brooks. that the other character yeah. has no. interacted with them, so we're like, what do you mean? Uh, and Cass as well. All three of us looked at, at this guy in this, this fucking bar, like, but hey. none of us said anything. <laughs> we were just, like, giving him the eyes. Right. Question number four, right? Four? Yes, four. Yeah, four. Yeah. What, uh, what are the town guards called in Eldilon? Oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> I know this there's, one, there's, but no, I can't say why. Two. It's a hint. No, there's not two. Because there's two groups there. But one of, like, my initial... <clears throat> oh, I know why, I know why, I know why. Because there's a mercenary group and a fucking guard group, right? Yeah, but we're talking about yeah. the guards. Talking about the official yeah. town Yeah, guard. no. I wanted to say the wrong one and then change <laughs> my mind. Question number five. What race was the individual that came in to help tra uh, compare your handwriting hey. on the letter you found? I know this. I'm feeling more confident now. 
No, 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 no. <laughs> I thought it was one thing, but it's not. It's another thing. And then if it's the first thing, I'm going to be sad. <laughs> this one may be a bit, uh, bit of a bit of a meh question, but it's it's because like, this only came up once. Oh boy. Ooh. What are the names of the twin gnomes that competed in the arm wrestle competition? Fuck. I think I know. Oh, I know that I they think rhyme. I, know. <laughs> I didn't write it down. Brooks I know they rhymed and they, they started are. with the same letter. And I think yeah, I but I can't what remember is, what that letter is. I think I've got it, but I might be wrong, and I'm not looking at my notes to check. <clears throat> okay. How many questions was that, real quick? Six. That was six. six. That was six. six. We're now on to seven. Okay. And we'll, we'll 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 make this the final question. Ooh. Um. Hold on. Gotta, gotta, I have like a whole list written down. I want to find a good one. You want to do the whole list? Why not? Let's go. No, because you know I'm gonna also ask the others questions and stuff uh, of the same list. Uh, I just have like a oh, fucking shitload of it. questions prepared. You're giving us all the hard. <laughs> yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them weren't that hard. Um. Okay. This is a, this is a bit of a throwback, Ooh. but still Session very one. much relevant to this campaign and has come up in this campaign as well. Oh, it's gonna be a campaign one question. What is the what is the name of the empress? Motherfucker. Fuck, man. <laughs> we were taking notes. Session one. <laughs> Her name came up this campaign. Her as well. campaign one. I know it did. Yeah, it did. I just <laughs> don't know it off by heart. Because the lady is like her emissary or her voice on in this place. But I don't the remember lady. what her fucking name is. I, I know the fucking Imperial Emissary's name. I just don't know. Yeah. We've only ever called her the, the fucking it's Emperor. Not the question, is I it? Can tell you, I can tell you what race she is, oh, but I got nothing. I, I, mm, I feel like I should know it. Well, checking my notes wouldn't even help because I wouldn't. I don't think I've written it in my notes for. This. I don't think I've written it in my notes, but I feel like it's. No. I'm just putting Fuck. question marks. I'll admit I got nothing. All right. Nothing. I need you both to just copy paste your answers in a DM to me, and then. Uh... I'll just send you a picture because I wrote mine oh, on Discord. Um, I'll copy paste them here. Okay. All right. Sending. I think. Okay. 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 I don't know if I'm right or not. I think I know I the Empress one. I feel pretty confident with everything. I think I know two. the Empress one because I the, the name reminded me of something in fucking Elder Scrolls, but. No, I don't remember the Empress's name. I'm just gonna say that. I don't okay. Know. I don't. We have Ethan. With. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll just, I'll, I'll let like, you guys like, correct yourselves. I know the winner already, but yeah. okay. Yeah. The answer to how long has Eldilon been a city is 25 years. Hell yeah. Yeah. The answer to the question, what is uh, the official title for the leader of the trade company, is Primus. Hell yeah. Fuck no. I got that one. The I didn't know color one. eyes of the Asimar are black. Damn it! I was between yeah. that and gray, and I put gray, and I should have put black. <laughs> no, I remember Dutch vividly being like. Yeah, like I knew they what, weren't a the color. Entire, they were the like a monochrome. Eye, like everything. Yeah, because like I I the remember the in session the zero. Was gray for a second. Session zero, I was like, that's edgy as fuck, my yeah, guy. You were. Same, and now I'm mad um, at myself. All right. The town guard in Aldilon are called the Blue Sentinels. Got that I nearly put high seas protectors, and then I remembered. <laughs> that's the navy. Like, that's the navy. When yeah. you were doing drunk souls. You mentioned the Blue Sentinels specifically. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's a Dark Souls yeah. like, covenant. Yeah. That's the only reason I remembered, because you got um, drunk. The race of the uh, individual that came to help compare handwriting was Halfling. Hell yeah. Fuck! You thought he was a gnome, didn't you? you no, did. I said Halfling, the and no, then I changed yeah, it to you gnome. Said gnome. Question mark is in your answer sheets, yeah. <laughs> I I got, and I then I the said Halfling. to you. I said, if it's the first one and not the second, like, if I've changed it on myself, I'm going to hit. <laughs> the oh, name right. of the twin uh, gnomes, Topsy and Turvy. Yes! Nope. I got it. 
All right, so I'm five for seven, because I didn't and write anything Empress, for the Empress. her name, uh, you misspelt it, Ethan, but I'll allow it, is uh, Thalmar. Thalmar, that's yeah. what it was. So with that... <laughs> Did I win? We have Ethan with one, two, three, four points. And we have Laura with one, five. two, three, five. four, five points. Base. So if I hadn't so changed my wins. answer, it'd be a draw. If you wouldn't yeah. change I'm... it, would be a draw. So Laura, you win the first Woo. dungeon select trivia quiz. Good job. Hell you yeah. both, you both D are right. You both are pretty D&D well. is a collaborative well. game. Together we got them all right. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this you, is Mr. true because the ones I missed, you yeah, got, true. you got yeah. black, and you got the Empress's name. So congratulations, you passed. You're 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 paying Woo. attention, and I'm very appreciative. Big brain. Gonna get, <laughs> get, get some 300 IQ emotes in chat. The whole thing is really just a test to go. Are my players listening to me? There you go. Wanna... I don't think I'd have done better with notes, to be honest. I did um, look at my notes. I no, like if I'd looked at my notes, I've opened them up now. They're all Sassy, in character because you're, you're not a sub. Okay. So Any it's like, signed up for WrestleArm, Davian beat Dagon, <laughs> one, got a badge, and last room got his pocket cut by a child. He really did. He really did. Uh, um, so yeah, inside was that, was, uh, that was Which our first edition of, of, of Dungeon Select Trivia. Thank you for, for, for partaking. You did, you did great. Proud of you both. Hell you yeah. got over half, you got over 50% score, both of you, so therefore, you're fine. Um, Thanks, Dad. <laughs> it's feel like the adult, like everyone's a winner. <laughs> no, Laura is the winner. You're not. You lost. Boom. <laughs> Ethan, thanks for gifting Sassy a sub. You fucking ingus. <laughs> and Bell, thanks for the resub as well. Appreciate you. Two months. Too late, on. Sassy. No refunds. Can't refund a sub. No refunds. Um. Okay. So uh, we're gonna be playing. I think we're gonna be playing this this little trivia quiz with um the other four as well. Whatever duos end up coming on Dungeon Discord over the next two weeks. Um. And I want to add like a little, a little, a little game to every dungeon discourse from here on out in the future. A little, little friendly competition. Um, with Fun. that, I did want to bring something else up, and I completely, it's completely fucking escaped my mind, which is very annoying because I well, had a question maybe for you guys. While you figure it out, so the other thing I enjoyed about last session was when and i said it when we were just talking after session in discord but obviously none of like twitch chat y'all didn't get to hear it but i found it funny because the minute um brooks came up to diagon and was and the said the logic was you're stealthy want to come with me and help me do a thing and i'm like laura knows you're gonna want me to help you steal shit and diagon <laughs> is lawful so diagon ain't stealing shit so but it was so funny because i know but diagon's like sure because just hoping and diagon also suspect like well, we'll get there, and I'm just not going to do it. And that just made me laugh. The worst part of that? I knew. I <laughs> knew that, you, that she wouldn't... Yeah, yeah like, you knew. <laughs> she might... Uh, like, my best hope was that she'd be like, do what you want, I'm not getting involved. But, like, Brooks doesn't know that. Brooks yeah. sees, like, hey, <clears throat> someone else is stealth. But now it's all worked out anyway, because mm -hmm. Kess decided that she wanted to come, and now Brooks has a chaotic partner in crime. Yeah, it um, just means that if they sorry. ever steal anything together, instead of it being stealthy, it's going to be chaos and everything's going to go wrong. Well, and... The thing about Dagon's lawfulness is it very much and why it's lawful neutral, not lawful good, only applies to herself. She doesn't really care about what other people do. You want to break the law, you do you. The point is, she has been on the receiving end of a wrongful accusation that almost cost her her life purely based on prejudice and the way she looked. So the way she interpreted that is... I have to live so within the law because they are, they will accuse me for even a second. I need to make sure I can never be seen. I can never be accused. I can never do anything where I could be caught or put in this position. But if yeah. you want to, go for it. Your life. <laughs> but I can't. So she won't stop you. She And she wouldn't She's like, I will not help you steal. I will not touch the cart. I will not play lookout. I will walk away and pretend I have no idea what's going on. But you can do whatever you want. Plausible deniability. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but then chance. I also don't think Brooke's gonna bring along uh, yeah. <laughs> a, 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 a spectator. Huh. Uh, we got hey, a bell in chat saying that she enjoyed the combat heaviness of last session. Uh, yeah, and I, the reason being is I wanted the jungle. Like the jungle is mainly like uncharted it's territory. Jungle. Like <laughs> it's it's a jungle. You're on new land. Sure, we, you, you guys know of certain places in the jungle, like the bigger temples and stuff, because they have been found. But there's a lot more 
there's a lot more in there. Um, Dude. There's a lot more in there that is just uncharted, and I wanted the jungle to feel like a threat, so that's why I immediately threw the fucking giant ape at you, because there's just wildlife in there that is so foreign. Primal. And primal to what your characters would have been used to growing up in different places. Um, and I, yeah, I want the jungle to feel scary. I wanted to be like, ooh, like there's, and I'm kind of glad you guys decided, like, yo, dude, let's go around and go through some cities and stuff, because like it really amplifies, the, like it kind of feeds into the idea that like jungle scary, you know? I you know, was like, gonna say, it's... I realized I totally forgot to when we were talking to Jolly about the cart. I should mention, hey. Does the Lotus have any interest in pink algae for making health potions? That's why I, I meant to sell it, and I forgot. So I still have two vials. I mean, you're of still you're still in tavern. Pink algae. You're still in the tavern, right? We are. Morning. We're so currently if, sleeping. So if you yeah, want if that, I'm... if you want th th uh, that to be a thing, I'm sure you can you can hit up Bell and be like, hey, yeah. when Diagon wakes As up, a, if if she'll my she's internet gonna ask can't Cass do it about this. Yeah, if my internet can't Whatever. hold up, I'll just be like, Cass, you know, sell the algae for Daigon, please, and give me my money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's like a thing in many video games, but you know, like, there's always that area where it's like, huh, don't go here until later or you'll die. <laughs> and you're like, no! You know, in Fallout, it was like, it was the fucking nuclear sea or whatever it was called, the green sea. Um, There's the, the, the dark world. zones in it's the division. The <laughs> there's something else in, like, um, Dying Light. Breath of the Wild, yet yeah, you can go to. It's what the fucking jungle feels like. Yeah, I mean, it's like, definitely it's it's, it's, it's it's a scary place, and it's meant to feel scary. There's not just a bunch of wildlife that will fucking try to kill you, but there's also you know diseases and illnesses, things that isn't normal to and just natural hazards growing up on on other uh, places because there there are no jungles on Caldelar. There are yeah. no jungles. Like I'm also in sure Monfield. there's like there quicksand are no jungles in Plumerion. Jungle. Yes. Agrand is the first continent that has like jungles and stuff. So like this is new for for everybody. Nobody's seen. It's like a forest, but warm. Yeah. <laughs> warm and wet. Warm and moist. And exactly like Ooh. a bunch of like natural hazards and, and new plants and and fruits that may look very tasty, but fuck man, if you eat them, God, God, Godspeed. I love cleric, the idea. You know, like it's so uh, I want there to like... be like a proper like survival aspect, especially with you guys having a ranger. I wanted there to be like a proper like like survival aspect to to um to to the jungle and yeah. uh, that's that's I'm looking forward to you guys to like to travel and throwing different things at you. It's gonna be fun. I love the idea that we're gonna go to the temple, save the world, and then on the way back, like eat a dodgy die. fruit and just fucking die. We're just get, like, fucking like we get back and we're like, no, it's we've got, got malaria. Malaria, rip, dude. Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole section in the Tasha's Cauldron book um, with like dice tables you can roll for effects that are based on different areas. And one of them, there's one called like Primal Fruit. And it's basically like fruit that has weird, trippy, psychedelic, but also <laughs> harmful effects that you can roll. And I, I started to put it in the, the one shot that I ran. It wasn't mm -hmm. part of the original, but I kind of inserted it in there. It's like a Feywild have weird food. Uh, yeah, that absolutely. These like, probably is never one eaten. giant acid trip, really. So yeah, I used, I used the magic mushroom table from Tasha's Cauldron at one point in the one shot. Nice. <laughs> when they eat Feywild food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was fun times. So I'm sure something like that could happen, too. We'll just, like, we think these are okay. Yeah. Roll, like, like, like a five algae, on a survival check. The algae, for instance, is, is just an example of, like, stuff that really doesn't... hasn't been properly... Um, I'm going to say this. Over the last 30 years of people being on the continent, yes, they yeah. found pink algae, and I've realized that they could make... they can make healing potions with them. But before then, pink algae just didn't exist. Like, mm -hmm. that, that is something... Only found in the jungles of of Agrand, uh, Kaldar in this case, and more specifically. Uh, and it is, I just like the idea of this land offering so many new uh, ingredi potential ingredients for for stuff. Um, that like the reason there's so many fucking guilds is because like new ores, so we need a mining guild and prospectors guild to like figure out what that can be used for. New plants, so we need herbalists. Uh, we need we need uh, that. We need alchemists. We need uh, you know people that figure out. Oh, will this kill me when I eat it? Will this kill me when I eat it? Uh, what can we use this for? Uh, new wildlife and a lot of threatening wildlife. So that's why there's so many mercenary guilds. Uh, there's there's the Calvados hunters, but there's also the 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 the, uh, the 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 fucking heroes of exile offshoot that I forgot that I'm blanking the name of. Um, 
whatever. There, there's a variety of, of mercenary groups uh, as well, because people need shit explored or discovered, uh, but there's going to be f a lot of scary creatures that no one has ever seen before. Um, I, I love the idea of... I kind of took a look at um, Greedfall uh, when thinking of... I wanted of, to play that. Because Greedfall is a game that's all about, um, you know, you are new to this continent, go yeah. explore it. Like, you're you're the first settlers, go find out what the fuck this is. I, I, took, I, take a, I took a look at that and kind of looked at how they did it. And um, um, when it comes to, like, you know, inserting foreign religions, but also, you know, dealing with these new threats and 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 finding the you know the, the, finding these like new ingredients or new new herbs new wildlife new fruits new vegetables mm -hmm. whatever it may be um and like finding out what they could be used for um and it is i dude i'm having a really good time just mm -hmm. tinkering with that as we go <laughs> it's, it's it's a lot of fun because obviously um when i made uh when we did campaign 1 the world had been around for several eras and thousands of yeah. years um so everything that there was to be found had been found and there was nothing mm -hmm. like you know everyone knew pretty much you know all the wildlife that na naturally lives on uh in Kelbalar or the kingdoms or planarion had been documented and written upon there's encyclopedia clopedias uh, bestiaria bestiaries with everything you need to know about everything um but agrand it's just a complete blank, like, blank fucking book. There's so many yeah. new creatures that are completely foreign to what you're used to uh, and all that stuff. And it's, I'm so excited to, like, the deeper you go into the continent, like, say, down the line, you know, you travel deeper inward and you leave Keldar and you actually go deeper to the, to the places where there is just no settlements yet made by... Uh, by We're by, gonna make one. By, We're gonna by, by the turn settlers. it into Age of Empires, <laughs> RP style, and make uh, a civilization. You're gonna have to literally, like, you're, gonna, you're gonna encounter uh, creatures and races that are gonna be just as fascinated with you as you are with them because they had, oh, they had no good. idea. <laughs> they, had, they had no idea, like, <laughs> what the fuck is a human? You know what I mean? They don't know. We're gonna find frog people. What are tieflings? Well, I mean, Daiga's hope is that she finds more. What are tieflings, Maxi, and It's like, this is where I'm actually from somehow. Some weird genetic. Like, Tabaxi, related to Tabaxi these people. do exist on the continent because, you yeah. know, it's kind of, kind of, kind of, that's kind of their thing. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like, it's, it's, I'm so fucking excited just to see where this is going to go and, 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 oh, the, the exploration. Like, the proper going to places where genuinely no one has been before. That, that prospect. Oh, dude, it, it excites me. I'm so fucking... Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward I mean, to that shit. I'm really liking... This isn't to say I didn't like the characters of Campaign 1, but I'm liking that the way that our characters tend to interact in this one. I think it's because, as a general rule, everyone's playing much less serious characters. Mm. I don't... Maybe not... Not like when seriously, that, like they're not like back at like campaign one. Your first character is like Atanas was a fucking dickhead. <laughs> uh, fucking Lausanne was a fucking Nicole, mobhead. not so serious. Nicole was a fucking <laughs> dickhead, right? Like maybe not, ser maybe serious isn't the right word, but like everyone's much more. I'd say they're less intense. Yeah, less intense. Everyone's much yeah. more relaxed. Yeah, and I think part of that campaign. is also. You know, been there, done that. We've played the intense character. Let's dial it down a bit and just kind of let yeah. the character progression speak for itself. Kind of, kind of vibe. Which is why, like, I'm, well, I'm also constantly be... torn because I'm really enjoying like the very sort of heavy storyline we stepped into straight away mm -hmm. and exploring shit and all that. But then, like, part of me also just wants to like spend three hours sat in a tavern, being like, "Okay, where are you from? <laughs> What's your well, favorite type just... of fucking?" crisps it just lends itself to better storytelling i think and this is also our growth as players you have to it, when you start there like if you start at 100 it's much harder to get the rewarding payoff of like a story arc and growth but like starting so if you start at that really heavy really serious like that's my one i think the thing with kisera and when she came in so strong and so heavy and like my life has been fucking miserable and i will find my like missing daughter no matter what and she was very serious very heavy all the time but then it means like when you have those moments 
just when you when you sit in one emotional state all the time it's less um like from an audience member perspective it gets less powerful when those moments happen when they're happening all the time whereas if when we're more laid back our characters are a bit less like full throttle foot on the gas at 100 all the time then when we hit 100 it's much more impactful and it's kind of like that whoa take a step back <laughs> like something's going down kind of thing yeah like um Obviously, I, I, wanted more to throw you, to, like, I wanted to throw you into bro. a story arc right away to kind of set the tone and set the pace and get you guys started. But after this is done, you have complete freedom to do whatever the fuck you want. Because every one of you... <laughs> That's terrifying. I mean, like, every one of you has one or two story arcs ready for them that they can introduce oh. to the party. That they can introduce to the party. At any, you time, know what? At any, time, at any fucking time. At any time, we have things so, in our back like, pocket. That we is be like, completely hey guys. in your control. Uh, I would I'm love. Just, I can't wait know, to see so. who's gonna cave first. What duo is gonna be like? Hey, so we have this thing we could use some help with. <laughs> I reckon it'll. Be, I reckon it'll be a Lazarin and Davian. They've all. They've also like brought one of theirs up uh, a couple of times, like when they yeah. talking about like people worshiping dragons, setting fucking farms on fire. And shit. I, I reckon yeah. that on the way, like it's. They've <clears throat> mentioned that they have business that they want to attend to in one of these cities in southwold yeah. the ones you're in now in yeah. southwold yeah. i think i think well now we have to come back to southwold <laughs> well we're gonna pass probably gonna pass back this way on the way back anyway yeah. so mm -hmm. it might be a case of checking in on what their thing is maybe dipping back to eldalon purely just to get our reward and then back and to then south heading world. back to, like it makes sense yeah. in my and, brain you know, like, like Turn in Jeremiah if you manage to take, yeah. take him alive, right? <laughs> also if we thing. succeed. I mean, mm, a oh, lot of not, effort dude, to bring dude, dude, a, dude, a, hold a on, captive. Hold on. Quickly look on something up because, like, he got fully transformed. Oh no! Uh, he's gonna be a scary snake man. So she's gonna show us what he looks like now he's transformed. But not snake man. He's gonna be just full snake, only a little bit of man. Yeah, he's he's a uh, Yuanti abomination now. Oh, 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 Tower of Seth. Literally, oh, I hate literally. the sound of that. Oh. Um, like, literally, they are... Picture Arbok without the big cobra, like, head, right? Yeah. And then with ar scaly arms and, like, sharp claws. That's literally what he now I... looks like. Like, just look it up. You want the abomination. That's, that's what he got turned into. That I tried to describe. You want the abomination to, is going to be the name of Brooke's up, first know? band. Like, do it. I'll, you do it. I'll I'll take a third class in bar just to play rock concerts. Oh God. <laughs> no. Don't fucking no. triple multi class. That's just bro. like Fuck no. Uh, Stop. Um. With that said, I'm sweating my fucking tits off, and it's been about an hour, which is typically the ideal length of these. Um. So unless there's any questions or anything did unsaid, you, did you remember what it was you wanted to ask us? Um, or no? no, I completely escaped me. No, so, uh, we'll he'll remember. We'll save that for, we'll save for next time. <laughs> we'll save that for next time. But uh, I'm okay. roasting my fucking bollocks off because it's warm as fuck. So, with that said, uh, if there's any questions that you still have, chat or players, ask them now or forever hold your peace. I or do not you know, hold your peace until so. next week. Uh, <laughs> Less of a question. I'm just, I'm terrified of the idea that you've pointed out that you have like story acts in mind for each of the characters, <laughs> because there's about seven different things that mine could be, and all of them terrifying. Yeah, the only one I don't have them? story arc in mind for is fucking Koiba, because he so just kind of Koiba sort of built himself to be like that, right? Yeah. Like he's built this character. I think he wants less of a story arc and more of a character. Well, he's getting one. Fuck <laughs> he's getting one. Fuck he's getting one. Fucking shit. Too bad. Um, just oh, I guess one, have, one have someone question. die and bequeath him a plot of land. <laughs> and, you know, like, last story after the campaign, Stardew Valley. save the world. Just, like, when just in doubt, go when and, in doubt like... kill his parents, dude. Look straight up. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, pull a Disney. When in doubt, like, literally burn the fucking church down that he's a part of and got sent away from, <laughs> like, to, to go to this land. Holy fuck. Oh, man. Um, you had a question, Lauren? Yeah, just for for Ethan for books. I know so far he's he followed Dagon and Kess like, hey, we can we can maybe get the thing, but you can't ask us where we're getting it. And he's like, all right, how 
how much like is that actually like is that gonna last or is it i'll do this until they get the thing and then i'm not gonna stick to that and i'm gonna be annoying and like ask like how much do you need to know or is he very much like all right that's fine he like, doesn't Forehead. care is <laughs> brooks is very comfortable with the concept of they're a shady thing like if it turns <laughs> up and there's four dead bodies and a splash of blood against the wall he's gonna ask questions <laughs> But if he wakes up Imagine. and there's a cat outside, he's going to be like... Imagine this whole time, Kess and Daigon are actually evil-aligned characters. And so we're just like, you can't ask us questions. Let's go. And then we're like, Nobody Let's go ever that suspects the, new, the lawful character to be evil-aligned. They always assume it's the chaotic <laughs> neutral. There you go. Um, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Ethan, thanks for giving us up the sassy. Bell, thanks for the resub. Uh, we'll be back here on Sunday for session five it's gonna be a good time and then hopefully yeah, one day we'll actually be able to do Baldur's Gate again because we've cancelled the last two weeks because of various reasons and it's uh, you know we want to I want to finish that shit so yeah. we'll see you yeah. Monday Same. Uh, Monday we'll see you Sunday sorry this will be up on YouTube on Monday, Saturday Sunday, Sunday. Uh, I'll eventually remember the question that I wanted to ask them and I'll just have to wait until the next time they're on Ninja we'll do, it, we'll do it on Twitter if it's specifically for us too we'll do it on Twitter or the subreddit or the subreddits yeah, yeah true um, thanks for watching everybody Ethan, Laura, thanks for being here. Appreciate you. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.